Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal. So there's been a lot of hubbub lately about people switching away from WhatsApp because they're fa owned by Facebook and Facebook's going to steal all your data and Facebook's the devil and all this stuff. And whether you think that or not, that's really, you know, up to you because, I mean, a lot of people don't really have a problem with, you know, uh, Facebook having your data because you probably have a Facebook account and therefore they already have your data. So what's the matter if they have it more or have more data? Uh, but some of us, you know, and probably most people who are in the FOSS community are more interested in their privacy and interested in not seeing Facebook have access to every single piece of data they've ever produced. So what I've decided today is I'm going to take a little bit of a look at the, the three main messaging apps what they are, how they look, especially on Linux, uh, and whether or not you should, which one you should use. Uh, so I've used all three of these fairly extensively, and I have my favorite. And uh, I will just point this out that for the most part, this is like any other choice you make, you know, in your computing life is that it's mostly a personal preference and based on what you like the most. So these are the three apps on Linux. This one here that I've made the biggest for whatever reason is Signal. This one here is Signal. This is WhatsApp, and this is Telegram. Uh, and I'm going to take a closer look at them. So I'm, what we're going to do is actually look at the. Um, we're going to try and try to answer four questions today about each of the, the apps. And what we're actually going to start off with um, WhatsApp, which is this one here, which worked out really well. So we're gonna answer, we're going to like I said we're going to answer four questions. Uh, is it open source? How is it encrypted? What is the app like on Linux? And what is the app like on mobile? So I won't be able to show you the app on mobile because I'm not set up to do that yet. Maybe eventually someday I'll do that. So you're just going to take my uh, my word on it. But um, I'm going to answer answer those four questions on each of the the app uh, on each of the messaging clients, and then uh, at the end I will go through and answer which one I think you should use, or what which one's my you know favorite so again what's that is it open source no not even a little bit it's i believe and i might be wrong about this i believe it op started out as open source as like an open source project uh, and then when it was bought by facebook it was taken closed source i could be completely wrong about that i i just vaguely remember hearing about that so as of right now it is completely proprietary owned by facebook i mean there's not much more to say about that how is it encrypted according to the website which uh i think i have their website here uh, yeah, this is their uh, their website, and it, according to the website, it's end-to-end -end encrypt encrypted. But some of your information, and this is true whether or not your privacy your the privacy policy says so. Some of your information is sh like your phone phone number and your contacts and stuff are shared with Facebook. Uh, Basically, the whole hullabaloo that just went on of them changing their privacy policy was basically telling you that they were doing that. They've been doing that already. Uh, it was just the policy was actually they went through and told you they were doing it. Basically, that's what was going on. That's the reason why people decided to flee from WhatsApp. Uh, so, yes, it is encrypted end to end, but there's quite a bit of information that's being shared with Facebook. So, what, so what, are the, what is the app like on uh, Linux. It's all right. So first of all, there's several third-party apps. There's not an official client for Linux. Uh, this one here is called WhatsApp for Linux. Uh, it's in the AUR. I believe it's in the Ubuntu repositories. Uh, there's ones called WhatsDesk. So there's ones called WTDL or something weird like that. Um, there are several of them. They're all basically uh, web apps. You know, so Electron-based ran. ran. Uh, they're all terrible. <laughs> they're, they're, none of them are very good at all. Uh, as you can see, if, if we, I go back to this view here, they don't. One of the best things about a uh, an application is that it, when you change the size, it kind of changes the interface. So if I change this too far, that becomes unusable. Uh, and we'll talk about Signal doing the same thing. But like with Telegram down here. You can see I can still use this even though it's really, really small. So I'll talk about this more when we get to Telegram. But the design of the app of WhatsApp is not that great. Now, you got to keep in mind it is a web app, so that's just the way it is. And because there's no official client, 
you know, that's just, you know, it's just something that Linux users has to have to deal with. Uh, what is the app like on mobile? The first party client is available. It's okay. I think it's personally kind of ugly by default. You have to change the wallpapers and stuff in order to actually make it look like it's okay. I've also found that it's very pushy with notifications. Uh, always asking you, hey, do you want to use your this your use this as your de default SMS app? Do you want to uh, share your contacts or do you want to contact your contacts to let them know you're on WhatsApp and all this stuff? over and over again and you have to turn that kind of stuff off it's it's very very pushy so um let's go ahead and move to signal signal is it open source yes kinda uh it does have some google nonsense built into it that is proprietary but you can get to the source code you just can't get to those googly bits uh, i'm not sure about the the server side stuff oh you know actually i do know about the server side excuse me that kind of gets into the encryption stuff. Um, so how is it encrypted? It's encrypted end to end. It has a distributed network, which means that uh, all their stuff isn't just like in one server center. Uh, it's also has, it's also encrypted via an or open source encryption protocol called the Signal uh, encryption protocol or something like that. Uh, so that's very encouraging. For the most part, as far as I can tell, other than the googly bits that is in, is in the source code, Signal is almost fully open source which is fantastic what is the app like on linux to be honest with you the uh app on linux is horrible uh it's so I, here's one thing that i didn't uh say about whatsapp in order to use both whatsapp and signal you ha you have to have uh the application existing on your phone it has to be on your phone and you have to connect the two so if they somehow get con disconnected your messages on your desktop won't show up. They have to be connected. You do this via scanning a QR code, and it's a really big pain in the ass. That's just the way it is. There's there's no getting around it. They're tied together through that connection. So if if the if it's not running on your phone, the desktop thing is not going to work. That's just I mean it, it's terrible design. Uh, and, but that's not specific to Linux. That's all of them. You know the web app that's on Windows and Mac. Uh, you can't just sign in with your 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 phone number. You actually have to sign in on your phone and use the QR code thing in order to link them. I'm not sure if they did that because they think it's more secure or what. I think it's kind of a, a, a pain and really bad design. As for the app itself, it has that same thing, that same problem with what as WhatsApp had, where it's not a responsive design. So if you if you make the window too small, the app becomes unusable. Uh, I've also noticed that the, the notifications on Signal on the desktop uh, sometimes don't come through. And I'm not sure whether or not that's just my system or if that's the case on all of the, uh, on, on everybody's app. So on mobile, the app is very well designed. It has light and dark mode. Uh, it's very usable and it doesn't force you to ha have all these crappy notifications like the WhatsApp one does. I've also noticed the the notifications are much more consistent on the phone. And I think it's because you're actually signed in on the phone. You're not dealing with that weird bridge thing where but really what, what's happening with these clients, both WhatsApp and Signal, is they're not getting the messaging from the cloud or the, you know, the, the interwebs. They're getting it from your phone. So if it's that extra layer of complexity that makes it some of those uh, notifications fail. So on the phone the notifications for your messages come through fine. That was Signal. Now let's talk about Telegram. Telegram, is it open source? Yes, kinda. Uh, the clients are completely free and open source. Um, all their applications, both desktop and mobile, open source. The server side is proprietary. That's just the way it is. Uh, it also works on a distributed network like Signal, I believe. Uh, how is it encrypted? Uh man, Telegram is complicated AF. Uh, it has server-side client encryption, but only in private chats, which are not by default. Uh, by default, all that you have is end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, but if you're on a public chat, so like say you're on this Arco Linux one here, none of this stuff is encrypted because anybody can see it. Now, I mean, that seems fairly obvious. If you're on a public chat, of course, stuff doesn't need to be encrypted because anybody can join. Uh, 
but if you're not in a public chat, you're just like in a say that like this is our like you know our, our Linux cast chat for it's pretty old um because we don't use it you know that often uh that's not a public thing nobody not everybody can get in there but it's not encrypted by default you have to turn that on uh they do have client to client encryption but as far as i can tell that's also only in private chats i may be wrong on that so like i said the, the encryption thing on telegram is a little they do encrypt stuff but the way they do it is complicated to understand uh, what's the app like on Linux? The app on Linux for Telegram is my favorite. It's the best of the bunch. It is a web app, but unlike the other two, you sign into this one with your your phone number, and then it sends you a uh, like an authentication app code to your either SMS or through the, the Telegram app on your phone. If for whatever reason you went through and uninstalled Telegram on your phone your telegram on your desktop would continue to work. That would not be the case with the other two. So that's really important, I think. And I've also noticed that the, the notifications work better on the desktop app for, for telegram uh, compared to the other two. Probably, again, because you're actually logged into it. So the messages are actually coming here instead of going through your phone to your desktop. Um, what's the app on, like on mobile? It's also very very good it's well designed the notifications come through uh and you know it, it it's just really well designed i really do like it as you could probably can tell i like telegram the best out of all of them i think it's the best design in terms of apps i think it has the best linux support for apps uh the encryption thing is a little wonky uh but if if but because it does have encryption at least even if you don't understand it, uh, it, it seems to be perfectly fine. It, I don't think it's as quite as secure as something like Signal. So I think Signal, if you're looking for the balls to the wall, uh, most secure messaging app, Signal's probably the one you want to go to out of the three of these. Uh, but Telegram seems to do perfectly fine. It, it also seems to be the most popular of the three. Uh, so you're going to find more uh, you know, public groups or whatever that you can join, like the Arca one, or there's an Ubuntu podcast one, and then you know so on and so forth. So that is the three of the 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 three most popular messaging apps. If I were you, I would use Telegram simply because it has the best app for Linux. So if you're on Linux, that's the one you should choose. I think hands down. I don't care for the other two. If you're going to make a choice, either use Telegram or Signal. WhatsApp is trash. I'm not even saying it's. Be I'm not even saying it's because it's proprietary. I'm saying it's because it's trash. It doesn't have a good app. It shares your data. It's owned by Facebook. <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's literally no reason to use WhatsApp unless, uh, like, your entire family is using WhatsApp and you can't get them to switch to something, you know, better. In, in which case, get new fam. <laughs> that was that was that's not a funny joke. Anyways, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't. Give it a thumbs down. You can support the channel in any number of ways. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash linuxcast, or the easiest way, you can just hit the subscri subscribe button. It's the big red boxy thing just underneath my fat face. Uh, and you can also hit the notification bell icon and see op open source software video things that I post seven days a week, including a podcast once a week. And uh, it's awesome. You don't want to miss it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.